Hello guys, welcome back to Beyond the Realms, and I am here once again through uh, the wonders of technology with Crazy J. Hello again. How's it going, man? Awesome, great to be back on here. Yeah, it's been a while since we've been able yes. to do this. Yeah, so it, it's a lot easier for us to, to do this now, so hopefully, you know, we'll be able to start doing some videos regularly to, this way, you know, I don't know, hopefully it works out. I'm so down with that, I love it. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fun. You know, whenever we can't get together in person, we just, you know, we'll we'll do it this way. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You know, we converse about movies anyway. And doing stuff like this is I've always loved it. It's yeah. Talking and stuff like that. It's just that was awesome. A lot of fun. So yeah, today um, we're going to be talking about the Lords of Salem, which I, you know, of course I already did a review on this. Um, but what we're going to do today, instead of doing a review, we're actually just going to kind of have a, um, a little open-ended discussion about this. So if you haven't seen the film or uh, if, you, if, if, if you haven't seen the film and don't care to have this spoiled, I guess I could say, you know, um, go ahead and watch. But, you know, if you don't want any spoilers, you might want to turn this off because we're, we're going to talk about our thoughts on this and, you know, what we think about it. Because uh, we actually, we, we just both watched it last night. It was crazy second time. I think it was like my fourth time because, you know, I, I love the film. But, um, yeah, we're just going to have a discussion. Oh, yeah. Sounds good because I love this movie, too. It's my favorite movie this year so far. Ugh, I can go on such a great horror film. It's great to see a movie like this out today. Yeah. So, um, do you have any initial thoughts or anything you want to say right, right out of the gate on, on The Lords of Salem? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, we both we're both really big fans of this. Um, you know, I, I I understand the complaints about it. You know, I understand that you know, not everybody likes artful type films or films that are more ambiguous on their you know their meanings and their themes. Um, I can understand that, but you know, I, I you know I think I can speak for Crazy here also. Me and him both love films like that. Um, you know, it, it's. To me, it, it just brings to mind the, the European style, 70s films, Italian films, you know, Argento, Fulci, uh, Polanski. yeah, Polanski, and just, and just films of that nature where, you know, you don't necessarily have a complete linear narrative, you know, all the time. Well, I mean, you do in this, but, you know, there's just the oddball weird things that's thrown in, you know? Yeah, like the films that they've watched, you know, I mean, it's like, you know, this it's not an easily digestible movie like what of course I'm saying just because it's like you know from where he was coming from with it was from like this old school Italian European horror feel and it's been I really can't remember the last time seeing something like this in the theaters really I mean really like this because I mean like you know there was House of the Devil and stuff but I mean before that yeah, it, yeah, it, it's it's the type of film. It's not like the one way I've described it to some people is it's it's not meant for mainstream consumption. It's really not. It's not a mainstream, easily digestible film. And I think that's part of the reason why it's hated. Also. <laughs> oh yeah, it definitely. It's, it, you know, it, Rob's always said it up front too. It's like you're either gonna love it or hate it. And obviously, the reaction to show yeah. you really love it or really hate it. That look okay. Sorry, right, Selena was checking out to make sure it looks all right filming. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I agree, man. I mean, I, I think it's that way, too. It's even more polarizing than his Halloween 2 was, which I mentioned in the review. Yeah, that's one of my favorites from him. But this, this, after seeing it one more time, it's like this is, it's, I'd say it's beyond rejects just now. I, I love it, really. really yeah, I mean, it, it's... I can't. I still can't bring myself to say that because of how much I've always loved Devil's Rejects. But it's it's damn close for me too, man. I mean, it's if not, it's just right there. I just I don't know, man. I mean, I, I think it probably already is. I just I can't admit it to myself because that's saying a lot, man. Because honestly, Devil's Rejects is just it's one of my favorite films of this century, just in general, you know. And, and for this to be even better, I mean. I can't deny, man. I gotta say, Rob Zombie is one of my favorite filmmakers, and I mean, I know that's not the cool thing to say. I mean, I know he, 
it seems like since the Halloween films, he's really taken a lot of flack. Like it seemed like he had good momentum and a lot of people behind him up until he did those Halloween films, especially Halloween Two. I mean, I know you're a big fan, but you got to admit that one even hurt his reputation even more amongst fans. And and I think now the cool thing is to kind of slag on Rob Zombie. And I hate that man. It's like he is a He's an accomplished filmmaker, whether people want to admit it or not. He, he has he, he has grace in the photographers who help him with coming up with these beautiful images in it. Yeah. And now, his writing is a little lackluster, but I think with this film, he grew leaps and bounds. I mean, like we talked about before, we've had these discussions about how he's right outside of his comfort zone. And for this movie, I think he did beyond that. Man, he really did. I, I totally agree. And I agree with everything he said. I mean, he's, I think he's best at visuals. He lacks with writing. I mean, I think most people agree with that, you know. But, yes, he definitely stepped out of his comfort zone with this film. <laughs> I mean, without question, because, you know, if you didn't know this was a Rob Zombie film, well, that, and also, I guess, if you didn't have Sherry Moon in it, you would never guess this was a Rob Zombie film if you just went into it blind, not knowing it, because it's nothing like anything he's done. It's totally different, you know. Uh, but I guess, you know, one thing I want to go ahead and mention now, you know, since we talked about, you know, we're going to get into spoilers in this and we really haven't yet, is what are some of the problems you have with this film? Problems? Did you oh, okay. Like, well, things you didn't like? Well, upon first viewing, the, the first half was... I mean, with her just walking around and stuff, the very beginning was, it really dragged me. That, that's one thing I didn't like about it, but, but you know, after seeing it, that, that's one of the huge things for me. But then after seeing it again, it's like, that, that didn't bother me at all, for yeah. some reason. And in the theater, I was like, come on, when is this going to get going? But then, you know, seeing it again last night, it was like, it moved at a brisker pace for me, for some reason. It didn't bother me you know, as much, which is weird. Yeah, well, I wonder if it's because you, you, you knew what was coming, you know, which that, that's, you know, my first time into, I mean, I can understand that, but my first time, you know, I know some people's complained about pace with this movie and everything, but I, I thought it was perfectly paced. I was just entranced by the film from the get-go from the first time I saw it, but I think that also comes from reading the book first. So I, I kind of knew what was coming, even though I quickly saw it's very different from the book. You know, but yeah, I mean, I, I can get that. You know, like one of my problems, my, you know, my big problems with this is, first off, that demon devil midget thing. You know, and and I've heard that a lot of people say that. You know, like even people who like it, I think that that's the one flaw he did in this film. Like, I think he should have stuck with like what what's being called the Bigfoot devil. He should have put that into that part instead of that little demon thing. I just. And then especially the scene right after they show the cathedral where she's back in her bed and the demon comes walking up to her bed and it's and the music cues are hitting perfect, you know, along with the each step like I'm just like, oh my god. I mean and I and I've heard Rob Zombie say it's think that part is supposed to be ridiculous. You know, but it's it's not ridiculous in a good way, I don't think. I just don't I think he made a big mistake with that part <laughs> myself. I, you know. You know, actually, that little demon thing that that never bothered me. That always intrigued me about this. It's like that's one of the parts I like the most about it, actually. Yeah. It's like you know, that huge sweeping shot of the cathedral. It's just gosh, that is one of his best shots. Ever. Oh yeah, I mean, I I, I agree. I mean, I, I I love that whole setup. I love the whole look of that everything. It's just that little demon myself. I'm just like. Just because it doesn't really have any purpose in the context of the story of how the movie goes. Now in the book, there's a it's a little bit different. They don't really have that. It's more like she gets raped by the devil in that part, which would have been the Bigfoot devil in the movie. And you know, the little demon guy is in another part of the story in the book where he's. It, it almost describes it like a phantasm, like out of the phantasm films, where it's like a cloaked little midget demon that's with Margaret Morgan. And they come, like, basically come through the TV into the bathroom where Heidi is in the bathtub. And so, it, so it's, it's, it's pretty different. Like, that whole scene, like, the only thing they show anything of that in the movie is where she's sitting, you know, there crying and then the walls start bleeding. Like, they, you know, I guess budget-wise and time-wise they couldn't pull that scene off that was in the book. 
But that's really the only part that little demon midget or whatever you want to call it was mentioned in the book. So, yeah, I just I, I just think it would have been more effective to use that that big devil instead myself, you know, for that part. And then you know one other one of my other problems with this film is the whole end where you know Heidi is going in to watch. Um, the Lord's concert, and you know we talked about this last night too. Uh, you know she she's standing there, and all of a sudden she just says bye, and the doors close. Okay, now if that was some type of you know force that was you know closing that door, and, and you know Herman and Whitey couldn't get in, they should have shown that because it's just like the door closes and they're just like standing there, and they don't even show them again. You know I think that that's that's a that's a big problem with that ending. It's like, at least show them trying to beat on the door, trying to get in. I mean, there's just like no closure to that scene whatsoever. And well, well, I like the idea of like, them walking in and like, them, like seeing nothing. That would have been awesome. Yeah, that would have been cool too. Like, like you know, like, oh, basically like she's she's into another plane or some other dimension. Yeah, that, damn, that's cool, man. I didn't even think of that. That, that would have probably been even better than how the book was because in the book, Whitey actually gets killed, but Herman does go in with Heidi, and it's just very bizarre. Like, she keeps repeating what she's saying. She has no control over herself, and she's drawn to the stage, not, you know, without any control over her own body and motor functions. So, you know, it, it just works out better in the book. And, you know, that that's a thing where with the movie, that's not a... That's not a uh, a, a question of the budget because all that is is just having you know Ken Foray there a couple more days to be able to film. I mean that's that's nothing, you know. I mean, uh, they could have easily done that. Yeah. I, just... I mean, at least that you know do that part like the book, or you know at least show them trying to get in or something. That that's my problems with the movie. But honestly, that's probably my only two problems with this movie. Like other than that, I think that this movie is just damn near perfect in my opinion. I mean, I know. Like I said in my review, I know some people's gonna watch this and like, what the hell, man? But I, this movie just fucking worked for me, man, big time. No, I feel the same way. After seeing it last night, yeah, like I got it. Originally, my score was like an eight out of ten, but like seeing it again, especially that the ending, it's a nine out of ten now. Yeah. Easily. And that's why, yeah, and that's why, you know, I gave it a 9 out of 10, too, because, you know, I just have a per those two little problems, or I would have gave it a perfect score. Like, I, you know, I, it's very close for me, man. And, and, you know, just there's so many other things that do work in this, man. Like, one thing we, we talked about last night was the scene where, you know, Whitey's over there and she starts having that hallucination where she sees the doctors, the doctor devil things or whatever they are. Like, they look like zombie clay face yeah and you know they touch whitey and he his eyes turn white and he falls over and she's already coughing up blood like the whole look on her face right there when she when she's pointing and, and shit man it just you really feel like the anguish like you you see anguish in her eyes and i don't know if it's just the blood there in her mouth making that extra effect come through you know with just the whole way the whole scene plays out but I just thought that that worked really well, man. I, I absolutely love that scene. It's one of my favorites in the movie. Oh, that's mine too. Because just like I mean, there's so so much dread in that, and when she's on that operating table, it's so brutal, man. Yeah, and we talked about that too. How you know when they're showing her operating table, she's getting cut open, and they're pulling out intestines, and they all of a sudden they pull out that that little devil baby that's got the little tentacles on it that she ends up having for real later on in the movie. That's kind of plays out like a House of a Thousand Corpses type scene with Dr. Satan in a way. Kind of reminds you that because it has the voiceover, the guy talking shit. Like it just, it really brought to mind just, I guess, made more of the essence of House of a Thousand Dr. Corpses. Satan. Yeah, like you can, yeah, like you could see that scene being in House of a Thousand Corpses. That's, that's really like one of the very few moments that shows some of Rob Zombie's past work coming to this. Like, he, he really just distinguishes this film all on its own, except for little tiny moments like that, you know? Oh, yeah, and it's been taking the, the, psych, the psychedelic stuff from the H2, really. Yeah, yeah, it really does, man. But, like, you know, it, it really takes a lot of those trippy moments in H2, and he just went yeah, full so force. Yeah. So what, what was some, some more of your favorite scenes or moments in this film? Oh, well, I gotta, I gotta talk about the cinematography, because mm. I got, that, it is some of the best cinematography I've ever seen in a horror movie forever. And Wayne Toth hasn't done much either, has he? Well, 
no, no, brain of the trust. Brain of trust. Oh, why was I? Damn, I've got that all fucked up. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, brain of yeah, trust. But, but he's like 32 years old and he's done the cranks and stuff. But man, it, it's just. I, I love the control, just that, the control steady can and stuff. And just all the majestic, beautiful, slow stuff. And compared to his other stuff where it's all handheld and stuff. Yeah. It was, I mean, it was so, like, deliberately. Purpose to just be so still and beautiful for everything. I love that. And, and that camera style really works for those other films, but I agree with what he said in interviews. That wouldn't have worked for this. It would have made it, it just, this film wouldn't have worked better. That it, it wouldn't have worked that way. It works much better being more controlled like that. And even, you know, in the scenes too, like, you know, where they're showing these shots, I mean, it's, it's perfect on both sides. Like, if you look at the scene, like, if there's two trees, they have it perfectly shot in between those trees. When they show the church, it's showing perfect angles of the church. Like, it, it's symmetrical. Like, he said it's symmetrical, and it really is. If you pay attention to those shots, you know, I've seen it four times now. You've seen it twice. You, you really don't catch that stuff on the first viewing, but when you see it again, you notice how planned out those shots are. When they show, when they show scenes of the hallway, it, it's perfectly aligned on both sides. I mean, it's just... There's a real art that goes into doing stuff like that, and with this film being shot as quickly as it was, and with the budget it was, it's pretty damn amazing, man, because they pulled off some of the shit perfect, you know? Perfect. Yeah. yeah. And like, like, like we talked about, too, is like, like some of the stuff in this movie looks like paintings. It really did, yeah. Yeah, it really did. The trees walking out with those, like, girls with their the, the boots hanging out, man. That shot could have been, like, a, a painting, and then... Like the thing at the end, especially, gosh, that was a work of art itself. Yeah, yeah, the whole scene where she's basically, and that's that's something else I want to talk about. Like, you know, I, you know, I I know some people have mentioned, you know, that they 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 didn't get the the ending of this movie and they didn't understand it. But I don't know. Did you have a problem? Now, I didn't because I read the book. But did you have a problem at all understanding the ending of this movie? Not at all. I thought it was as simple as could be, man. I don't understand why it needs to be so hard to understand. Yeah, I mean, if you if you pay attention to the dialogue, especially the dialogue where Heidi goes into um, in, into the apartment with the three sisters, you know, and they talk about fate and and, and 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 all that stuff. If you listen to that, and if you listen to the dialogue in the hallway where they're like basically dedicating Heidi to Satan. And if you listen to the dialogue at the end, I mean, I think it's pretty easy to get. Like, basically, yeah, basically what happened is it's her fate. She has no control over it. It's super nihilistic. These witches are, they, they have a lock on Heidi's soul and making her to where she is having Satan's child. And at the end, when she has Satan's child, she dies, but she's also like a martyr for the cause, and she's basically like the satanic Virgin Mary, is what they're showing there at the end. Yeah, they, yeah, and it's as simple as the, all the women were related to the people from Salem before were murdered. Yeah, so, and, and, and because they, they had connections to the to the people who burned them, the witches at the stake. So, and then you know, it's all cut and dry to me. Yeah, and, and all of the women that end up dying there at the end, I mean, I know that that's kind of not explained, but in the book how they explain it is the women were drawn to the Lord's song that was played over the radio. The men hated it. And at the end, it was only women that showed up at the concert, and they all committed suicide, which he does mention in the voiceovers during the credits. But in the book, they're like stabbing each other and killing each other, but they're not hurting or in pain. They're like loving it because they're under the spell and they have no control. And that's that's Margaret Morgan and the original witches that, you know, they, they said we will get revenge on those who have done this to us, but also all of Salem, like all of the whores of Salem, the cunting whores of Salem, you know. they And they're out. I mean, it's just a total, complete nihilistic thing, man. I mean, I, I think it's... It's one of the darkest fucking endings I've seen in a movie theater, and I don't know how long. <laughs> oh, no, I know, and I, I like the, I don't mind the, I like the theatrical one because it doesn't show that. That's even, yeah, I, yeah. I yeah, I mean, it, it's it's cool, you know, when you read the book, it's cool to know that extra stuff, but the movie doesn't need that. I like how it's more ambiguous there and kind of 
just just shows that these women just fucking come in there and kill themselves. You know, I mean, I, I think that works too. But even if I hadn't read the book, I didn't have any problem understanding this. And you know, my wife. Selena, she she loved it. She totally understood. Like she told me what happened without me even telling her. You know, it's I don't really think it's that hard to get. Really, I mean, she had Satan's child and she died and she became like the Virgin Mary. You know, but she had no choice over it. It's that, she, yeah, she was like doomed from the very beginning. As soon as she heard that record or before, yeah. She was yeah, I mean, totally. And you know, I, you know, you talked about how there's like a dread in scenes of this movie. You know, I I think. That I think I mentioned this in my review too. I, it just every fucking shot in this movie, man. Every scene, there just there's a dread to all of it to me, man. Like I just I, there's just a total dread, and that's where I give that Fulci comparison too, man. Is there's just a big, just a dreadful feeling to this whole thing, man. You know that you just know nothing good is going to come out of this for the people involved. <laughs> No, and it just, it's like a nightmare. It just keeps getting worse and worse and worse and worse. Yeah, and, and I like, you know, that when it gets towards the end and it starts getting really trippy and really, you know, out there and surreal, I like that you don't know what's real and what's fake. Like, you, you can pretty much just sing what you can pay attention, but I like that you have that feeling of disorientation because you do feel like you're experiencing this with Heidi. And, and, and she wouldn't know what's real and what's fake, you know? And that also, I mean, there's several different ways to look at different scenes in this movie when you think about it that way, you know? Oh, man, the, 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 that last half is just like, it's one, it's such a huge, like, shot to the senses. That's what I loved about it. Like, seeing it the first time, like, my mouth was just open because it was so unbelievably beautiful and horrifying. Yeah. Well, man, we're sitting at, I think, right around 20 minutes now in this video. Is there is there any closing thoughts you want to say about Lords of Salem? I mean, anything at all you want to touch upon before we close this out? Uh, I just want to say it's it's my favorite film this year. It's great to see an homage to old-school Italian, European, uh, silver, and more, like Rosemary's exactly. Baby style. Exactly, yeah. And David Lynchian type of horror. And John Five did excellent sports here. Amazing. Oh, sport. man. Yeah, because it's very simplistic, but it works so much, and, you, and, it, and it is catchy. Like, I, you, you remember that shit, I think, and that's that's what I think works. Too many scores get, you know, overcomplicated anymore, and you can't distinguish or remember one score from the next, but this one you really can, man. It's so ambient and horrifying, just like the film is. Yeah. It, it's, it's without question my favorite film from this year also. And, you know, I mean, it may end up staying up there because I love it so much, you know, and I, I mean, I, I don't oftentimes watch a movie like this like four times within a couple weeks but it's just that type of film that it's just like man you know i i feel how i do with devil's rejects i never get tired of that film i can watch it over and over and that's how i feel about this one but i also have to mention that i think that many people if if they watch this film again will feel differently about it because I've already started to notice that because it seems like people who only thought it was okay when they saw it, the more they thought about it and the more you know it's resonated in their brain, they've come to like it more, I think, because it's it's not a film in that, that, that's meant to be totally understood or, or, or you're not supposed to totally get it when you first see it. And that's another reason why I say it's not a film meant for mainstream consumption. You know, I mean, because those type of films and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but those types of films, you know, you're supposed to, a beginning, a middle, and end, everything wrapped up. This film doesn't play that way, and you don't see many films given a chance like this on a national scale anymore. Now, granted, it was only 300 theaters it got released in, but once I saw it, I thought that that was even a miracle, because, man, this is, this is an art house fucking horror film, man, that's, you know, there's a lot left open for interpretation in this. Yeah, I know, and it's me. It, it just reminded me so much of the Beyond. And I, that's one yeah. of my favorite horror films of all time. Lucio Fulci, I love his stuff. And it just seeing like seeing such like a love for that style just made me just love it even more. Well, and how you talked about you know the Room Five, and this is basically a portal portal to hell, you know, and it is. <laughs> oh yeah. You know, it, it's basically like a portal to. It's like a portal to hell or the other dimension and like if you watch the film again you start to notice like we noticed a lot of this last night like it starts off slow or slow with the power of, of over Heidi but as it goes along the, that power and influence over her gets stronger and stronger you know and that's 
That's how it is in the beyond, too. You know, think hell starts taking over the, the movie and gets stronger and stronger. You know, until the end, the characters have no choice and then they're trapped in hell. And that's basically what happens to Heidi in this. She gets trapped in, in hell with these witches, basically, at the end. Exactly. They're, they're yeah. a lot like each other, I think. Yeah, they really are. I mean, it, it's very easy to compare this to Rosemary's Baby because it's witches. It's 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 it's, it's one woman it, it, that's in uh, an apartment complex. You know, and it, it, there's a lot of similarities to that. But it's still it still definitely stands on its own, though. I think, and I think right. it, it's one of the most original Rob Zombie films he's done yet, as far as you know, just making it his own totally. Oh yeah, and I, I agree about the replay that we play value too. Definitely, you can, I can see it being played tons of times. Oh, yeah. Just like that with three jacks. Yeah. And, and I just think you should just give it a chance at least to see it. And if you love it, then oh, that's awesome. If you hate it, then that's fine too. But just give it a chance. Yeah, that's the thing too. I've seen several people say, oh, I, you know, I've been told to stay away from this one. But really, you, you should. You really should see it for yourself. Um, you know, if people are still watching this at this point and went through all these spoilers and still want to see it. Um, because, you know, it's, it's, and I think you'll agree, th this is one of the hardest films I've ever seen to predict who will like it and who won't. Because there's been so many people that I've known that have absolutely loved it and then people that I thought might love it that have hated it. It's just, it, it's, it really is, man. And it's his most polarizing film by far, you know. And I, and I understand why, but I think everybody on their own should still give it a chance. Oh, yeah, that's what I think, too. Just give it a chance, see it. You know, sorry for it's spoiling it, but I mean, you know, you're watching it anyway, so. Yeah, yeah. Just give it a chance and decide for yourself. So, yeah, guys, that is our discussion on Lords of Salem. I know we're running, let's see here, we're running almost a half hour long now. Um, you know, hopefully you guys watched it this long and enjoyed this conversation. And, you know, hope, yeah, and hopefully if you were, you know, torn on some of, you know, the opinions of the film or some of the ideas of the film, hopefully we were able to clear some of it up. Yeah, I don't know, maybe. Yeah, we, we might only have, you know, one or two people watching it this far into it, but hey, you know, that it's all about us just having fun and talking, and we hope somebody will watch it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, guys, uh, this is Crazy Jay here, man. I really appreciate you being on again. Thank you. Been a great time. Yeah, it's always fun. And we're going to do some more. So, yeah, guys, this is Beyond the Realms. I appreciate you all watching. Have a good one, guys. Later.